Hi, I'm Doug. About two weeks ago I flew for the first time in 20 years and also the first time since I've been a wheelchair user. I was very nervous about it and there didn't seem to be any videos online showing what it would be like for me as a disabled person. So I thought that I'd record it in case this is of use to anybody else. It was a short hot flight from Glasgow to Isla one weekday afternoon about half five on a Logan Air Saab 340B. I booked it about six months in advance and I also filled in the form for assistance at the airports and on the plane, measuring my wheelchair and all the rest of it. And I also paid for priority security access and the posh lounge to try and make the experience as pleasant and stress-free as possible. Logan Air told me that they didn't use aisle chairs and also that there would be what they call an ambulift at both airports. This didn't prove to be true, as you can see. We arrived at the airport over two hours before the flight. We had checked in online, so we took our bags to the Logan Air check-in desk, then onto the outsized baggage hand-in, next to the Logan Air check-in desk. We went to the assisted travel meeting point, at the opposite end of the hall, where an assistance person then guided us to security check and on to the posh lounge. So we made it to the posh lounge. It wasn't much fun because at the check-in desk the guy was just, his customer services was just frankly really shocking and he was just pointing to us where to go and yeah he could have just been a bit more clear and helpful really our bags were outsized despite being really small and less than six kilograms when there's a 20 kilogram limit so we went over to the assistance desk where she was friendly but a bit dizzy told us where, where to put our stuff and then some guy came and helped us through security. They took me into a small room to search me. They swabbed my wheelchair and my shoes with what looked like a wet wipe. Had a look underneath my wheelchair and they patted down all areas, so to speak. I think because the, I'm really nervous and because the guy at the desk wasn't very friendly, I forgot to put my three hip flasks of whiskey into the hold baggage and didn't realize until after we dropped it off. You can try some if you fancy. No, but you're not allowed to dig it. It's not enough to dig Okay. Can we empty them out? Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But at least we're here. There's some planes over there somewhere. And we're, we're drinking champagne in the posh upper deck lounge and the guy who escorted us from OCS support was um, really good. So, so far so good. I'm feeling a little panicky but I'm sure it'll be fine. Posh lounge is worth the fee in my view if you can afford it. There's decent free food, a good view of the airport and you get to escape all the horrific shops that everybody else seems to spend their time in. It's a nice place to wait. The time in the lounge went much quicker than we anticipated. 40 minutes before the flight's scheduled departure, we were collected by a very helpful young lady from the assistance team. She took us to the gate. We had to go a long way round for wheelchair access and double back along the outside of the terminal. The staff at the gate were exceptionally friendly and helpful. They checked us off on yet another list. We were there less than five minutes before we were on our way to the aircraft. That's our plane, and next to it, that porter cabin come lorry thing, is the ambulift, which will take us up to the entrance. These staff were exceptionally friendly and helpful. It turns out that there was an aisle trail, they told us, after some confusion. I'm in the ambulift. After a certain amount of miscommunication, we worked out that they're going to put me onto an aisle chair, which is there. I was worried that the row that I'd be put on has no windows and that I wouldn't be able to get to any other row but very kindly some other passengers have swapped so that I can sit next to a window which will make me less claustrophobic but more terrified of the height probably. <laughs> well there we go, so yeah I'm about to be taken up to, hope you can see that at the aircraft door, here we go. And I'm not in the slightest bit nervous.
Oh, sorted. All right. Yeah, thanks. It'll fit even my fat ass. Uh, I took my wheelchair cushion on the plane as hand baggage to stop it going AWOL, but they folded up my wheelchair, tagged it cabin bag hold loaded, put it in a giant carry bag, and loaded it into the hold. No, sorry. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be going very fast or very I'm, far. I'm, I'm too fat for the belt. No. That was quite impressive. Just keep your arms in for me. Window or aisle, my friend. Window or aisle. Window, please. Thanks, hello. I really appreciate this help. Well, well, actually washed it over. Core, <laughs> my fat ass. <laughs> no, 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 you're actually all right. Is this the first attempt? That's me. Oh, lovely. Okay. Okay, so I lift. This one. Yeah. Okay, right. That's you, you've got that up out of the road, and if you just take your time. Take That's time. really easy. Easy. Take your time, all right? Thank you so oh, much, nice. guys. Aye, thank Bye -bye. you so much. Those guys were so nice, and that was so much easier than I was expecting. It was a relief, but now all I had to do was cope with my fear of flying. It's a tiny plane and very hot and cramped. I ended up having to strap my knees together to stop myself manspreading. I bought with me a portable fan and a USB power bank to power it and I'm really glad that I did because it helped a lot and because the vents above the passenger seats were pretty useless. Welcome aboard this low and air flight to Ireland. My name is Henry Keelan, I'm the captain of this flight. We've been flight I couldn't hear or lip read very much of what the captain or the stewardess said at all on this flight. So it's just as well we didn't crash because I wouldn't have known what on earth to do. Timing wise, we were 31 minutes from boarding the plane until we left the ground. That consisted of 14 minutes of waiting whilst other passengers boarded. Then the captain's welcome announcement. We were a further five minutes before starting to push back. Push back took one minute. And then we were waiting a further two and a half minutes before the engine started and we started driving around. We were six minutes driving around Glasgow Airport before we arrived and waited at the threshold on the runway where we waited for another minute and 20 seconds. It took 30 seconds for us to speed up down the runway and take off. And of course, you can never go wrong with a Tunnock Scottish Caramel. We were in the air for just under 25 minutes. That consisted of a six and a half minutes of climbing up to our maximum height of 8,000 feet, a further seven and a half minutes at 8,000 feet before we started to descend. And we descended for a further 10 and a half minutes, dropping off Flight Radar 24 here. Our maximum speed was approximately 270 miles per hour. I recorded the whole flight through the window. Click on the card to view it or read the description for the link, if that's your sort of thing. 
There's other stuff in the description as well, photos and other links that may be of interest. Ooh. The strength of the braking really surprised me. After we had touched down, we were taxiing for about three minutes, and then we stopped, they put the steps down, and other people started getting out. And then they came for me within ten minutes of touchdown, which I think is pretty prompt really. Still come up, did it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Good man, good man. Oof. Well done. Thank you very much. Right. Oh, it's a three point. Three that's point, posh. Right? Been in before? No. Oh, no. Thank you very much, Shy. That's grand, that is. Thank you. Yeah, just keep your feet on that. Yeah, from you. Yabba dab. You then? Perfect. Yeah. It's my fat ass. Thank you. Oh, and there's my wheelchair. Great. Right. Would it be better if I take this chair over? See if I better. Uh -huh. Like, see if you just take back a wee bit, I'll swing the chair over because there's a wee bit more. It's, it's oh, definitely, aye. Yeah. I'll just leave you. Are you using the ambulift, is it? Sorry? Are you using the ambulift thing, is no. it? No. The steer climber goes down. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. Mm. It's just because it just steps down itself. So. Sorry, uh, Jimmy, you're stuck, you know? Yeah, you've got that. Blimey. <laughs> this isn't precarious. Don't worry, just shut your eyes. <laughs> Have you got the parachute, please? <laughs> So this in some way goes down the... Yeah. And we took it back a wee bit. Oh my god. Are you okay? Just yeah. tell you right. Logan Air probably did me an unwitting favour by not telling me about this. I'd have been stressed about it all the way. Bye. Thanks very much. One, two, three. Oh my god. There we go. <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't precarious. Have you dropped anybody yet? Not for you, Michael. Go towards you, Michael. Go towards us, right? Were they the right way up or did you drop them on the head? <laughs> oh my god, this is really precarious. Keep your arms in. Keep your arms in, that's you. And, uh, and, uh, is this going to be safe? Yeah. Are you sure? No problem. Oh my god. No problem. Uh, oh, a nice bit of fresh air. Oh my. What? Don't worry, off the edge. Thank you very much. These guys were so incredibly friendly, lovely and helpful. That's what I call a service. Service. service with a smile. Thank you. Oh, this is going to be a relief. I'm too fat for airport. airport. Thank you. What? Brilliant. Thank you. Well, we made it. 
Achievement unlocked, first trip in an aeroplane since becoming a wheelchair user, with thanks to the support of so many people. All we had to do is collect our baggage, which is already waiting for us, just inside the terminal. Big place, isn't it? Really busy, really built up. Thank you.